All right, uh, greetings family. Uh, this is Bomani Tamba, and welcome to our Africa for the Africans, uh, Africa Tours conference calls. And this is uh, for the date of uh, January 14th, 2024, a fresh year. And this is our 18th year of our Africa Tours and Investment. And we have an incredible schedule uh, with a, of incredible tours uh, coming up. So main thing, just want to go through the schedule. Uh, this, I'll talk about uh, 2023, uh, this quick year in review, and then uh, our schedule for 2024 and 2025. And then open things up for us, uh, questions or if anyone want to dialogue about anything. Uh, but the main thing is just uh, making sure we're clear on all of the uh, preparation uh, details. All right, so I'm going to start with uh, screen sharing. And so the main thing I'm always telling everyone that's looking to travel with us is all the details um, for your tour information is on our website at africaforafricans.org. And so once you pass to pass um, by the uh, MP3 player on the left and the slideshow uh, in the middle or to your right, then you get all access to all the tour details. And so some of these photos are new, some of them are old, but uh, these are just random lists of uh, photos. And if you want to get access to all the uh, photos that we have, uh, we have a YouTube link and a Facebook link for the photos and videos. And then we also have Google Photos and Instagram and TikTok and things like that. So all those links are below, uh, with the exception of the uh, Google uh, photo link, which I'll figure our way out to just create a link to show the different galleries that we started creating, uh, especially last year. All right, uh, outside of the tours, uh, what we have is our Black Star Repatriation and Pan-African Community. So that is our community in progress in Jahadzi, uh, right there by Winneba, uh, between um, between Accra and Cape Coast, uh, somewhere uh, somewhere in the middle. Uh, we're looking at about an hour and a half to about uh, two hours away from Accra. And you're right there off the Atlantic uh, Ocean coast, about one to two miles away from the beach. So that's our future community. Um, once you click on the link, it's uh, full details, including all the videos and all of the pictures. So we'll, we'll keep on working on that vision. And once we do our next Ghana journey, then we have a lot more updates and details to share. Uh, scrolling past that is the Africa tour book. So once you click on this link right here, you'll see all of the uh, tour books. So as we talk about our year in review, this is our, our last journey, uh, South Africa, December 24th to January 4th. Uh, so simple uh, tour book with all of the updated schedule, the details as far as uh, what we do in the country, hotel information, uh, uh, tour staff information, uh, intro to the country, uh, and this access to this uh, preparation details to make sure that everyone is clear. And that was the second uh, South Africa journey. And we look to replicate that journey and have our current schedule coming up uh, the end of the year in December. Uh, so we'll definitely talk about that one. And uh, Tanzania, uh, November, 2023. So that was a fourth journey to Tanzania. And just been able to get uh, a lot of great documentation and just show an incredible experience in uh, East Africa. Uh, and before that journey was our Ghana journey. That was the 23rd uh, journey to Ghana. And that this tour book is a lot uh, bigger because it has this uh, more details than since we've been working on it long. I've been able to put together a lot of different uh, separate preparation. And uh, we started off last year with Senegal and the Gambia, another multi-country uh, 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 journey. And this is this was our second uh, journey. So scrolling down, you'll see more of the uh, tour books, and these are our, our preparation books. Um, they're available to download, and uh, they're available as flip books. And it's just basically a presentation, especially for those who are looking to travel to any of these countries. It offers a nice little you know, program guide. And these are just a collection of the ones that we have done in the past. And that is the last three-country journey, Ghana, Togo, Benin. And I'll say I'll never do that one again. Uh, yes, uh, 
a lot of motions and movements and uh, incredible preparation. We have to just have this thing well prepared, but uh, great journey and uh, uh, executed um, the journey. But uh, at the same time, too, that is a lot of countries and a lot of visas and a lot of moving around and driving. And this is the original South Africa book. Uh, I was able to modify this book uh, last year and make it into a nice book and look into really this, put together this um, more journeys uh, to um, you know, uh, South Africa. And hopefully we can just add one or two at other countries um, you know, since we're down here in Southern Africa. But uh, Johannesburg and Cape Town alone is it's a whole lot to do, a whole lot of roots, cultures, and adventure. All right, so let me uh, click back on the um, back on the main menu. All right, and scrolling down, this is a list. Whether you look on the main menu or you look on the front page, uh, this is a list of uh, all of our upcoming uh, tour schedule. And so our next journey is our Liberia and Morocco journey. That's uh, March 29th to April 9th, 2024. So click on the link, um, full tour, itinerary tour overview. And the main thing that we're doing right now is uh, make sure everyone is clear on visa process. So we're, we have a few visa process. And the simplest one that I have is uh, you just get us a copy of your passport um, page. And then we submit it to our tour guides and they'll process it to the, the embassy there in uh, Monrovia. Uh, please get your visa and then we'll get you back an electronic copy. Uh, so that only takes uh, a few days. And the other option is to uh, mail in your package to the DC embassy. But let me click on the uh, Liberia journey. All right, so this is a list of different things. Uh, overview, itinerary, general terms, visa process, improving your immune system, and departure reminder list. And this is standard for the uh, all the other journeys that we are traveling on. And then also, I've sent out newsletters uh, for all the journeys that we have listed for 2024. And the newsletter you just covered, overview and the itinerary, and this, uh, give you certain links uh, for pictures, videos, All right, so this is the overview. So right now our setup is uh, we have connection flights uh, to get you to JFK and then from JFK we're flying on Royal Air Morocco and that's gonna take us to Casablanca and also Liberia. So nice flow of itinerary uh, to where you can get to multiple countries and you don't have to do any long drive from one border to the next. Uh, so this uh, multiple country uh, works out great. You do one day on the way to Liberia and then one day back from Liberia. All, right, all of our tours uh, includes our transportation and tours uh, throughout the country. Uh, so in this uh, case, uh, Liberia will get your airport pickup. And uh, from there on, uh, we have a tour bus that will take you around the country on this uh, incredible itinerary. Uh, daily continental breakfast and gourmet dinner. And we have this an incredible um, arrangement of uh, resorts. Uh, most of them are resorts uh, in Liberia and then one uh, business hotel. Oh. And uh, what is uh, not included is uh, lunch and uh, group tips and uh, also a uh, visa. So the visa process, whether you mail it in or whether you uh, submit it uh, to our tour, to me to get to our tour guides or tour operators, uh, it's uh, $160. This one of those unfortunate situations. Some of these visas are high, but this visa is uh, is only good for one year. Uh, if you do mail it in, you do have additional options for multiple years. Um, which uh, once you click on the link uh, from the visa page, it does give you uh, a view of the uh, application itself, and then you see up to three years. So unless you're sure that you're just going to be going in and out of the country, uh, the best thing for now is just to just apply for the uh, multiple entry one year. And if you do a visa on arrival or the electronic visa process, how we do it, it's only good for three months. So which will work right now because uh, we're within three months. So the visa would expire after we uh, get back. 
right, so the uh, library journey, uh, the highlights is uh, broke down into this uh, array of historical and cultural sites uh, that we'll just uh, take you through. And this uh, is not the exact flow of uh, how it is on a itinerary. This is just kind of mixed in based on this, uh, just a few highlights. So we'll do a city tour of Monrovia. Uh, we'll also visit Liberian uh, National Museum, uh, Capitol Hill tour of Monrovia City. And so all of these uh, parts of Monrovia, when we're doing a city tour, look into this, record as much as possible to show people more of what the library looked like. Uh, it's a country where you don't see that much uh, documentation. So that's uh, what we plan on doing. Uh, Joseph uh, Jenkins Robert Monument, that's the uh, first president. So looking to do a great presentation on the monument. Uh, Providence uh, Island, uh, 1822 uh, sediment uh, from America to what is known as Liberia. Uh, so looking to organize a nice presentation and this kind of this working as best as possible to tell a story because um, part of the uh, library journey is to tell a circle and a cultural uh, journey, especially just the reconnection or the connection of from the African Southern diaspora to uh, Liberia. So definitely looking to you know, looking forward to this and uh, we've been working very hard on it, um, uh, especially the last uh, few months. And uh, so we're just looking to this, present something very unique. I know people have never seen like a, a journey to Liberia, but I just, it's on, which is unfortunate, but uh, it's time that, uh, you know, we get that connection going. And while we're driving around uh, Bushrod Island, our uh, free port of Monrovia, yeah, uh, and also we have a few different arts and culture places that uh, we'll visit. And for those who have school supplies and financial donations, uh, we can donate to one of these uh, schools or one of these uh, cultural sites, or uh, what I would say, um, cultural uh, centers. And when we first uh, start the journey, uh, we're gonna uh, start off, um, you know, start off in a part of. Um, uh, library where we're going to be able to just enjoy our uh, echo lodge and a uh, nice uh, nature reserve and uh, the place where that's uh, the, the actual uh, resort is called Labasa echo lodge resort and while you're there at that uh, resort we'll also go to Pokan echo lodge uh, resort uh, so a uh, very unique uh, part of the uh, itinerary our uh, tour operator you know we worked out to where once we leave from the airport we just head in that direction and this uh start off uh, our journey in paradise. And, and this is uh, one of the few uh, tours that we have. Uh, we have a real repatriation investment conference. Uh, this one is actually a lot more detailed than anything else that we've done. This one is a good four hours, um, include a banquet and um, also this a whole lot of different uh, presenters as we just gearing up the energy for library. So looking to have a whole lot of different people presenting information on real estate, uh, business investment, um, land laws, um, uh, the legality of business, how things um, move in the, the country, and so on. Uh, so all of this is uh, things that we're working on, uh, me and my partners, uh, and it's been very fruitful because this is the biggest amount of uh, assistance that we have had or the most people that we have had just working on a journey together. Uh, so we, so it's uh, looking forward to this a nice, nice fruitful uh, energy. And in the two days that we're there in Casablanca, uh, I'll be working out one of the local uh, guides to this uh, get us this as much um, as much to cover as much as possible in uh, both days. Uh, so we have more than enough time to this uh, do two full uh, day of tour in Casablanca. And these are just a few things that uh, we have listed. Uh, so and. Uh, Look to this uh, add more unique information, but as far as this, these are just basic sites: Arab League Park, Notre Dame, um, Hassan Mosque, uh, City Tour, and this and nice uh, lunch dining, and this us just making our way around and this visiting somewhere that uh, we've never visited before. So this will be the only journey that we have on the entire schedule that uh, is uh, and it's a first time for us, but um, you know, the preparation. We have um, you know, deliver a nice uh, introduction into both countries and uh, for Liberia, it, you know, with the two people that we are working with, uh, they'll be there ahead of us also to make sure things are organized and set up. So just uh, looking forward to venturing up uh, to two fresh new countries to start off 2024. So on that note, let me put back on the main menu.
and uh, we'll continue to the rest of the countries that we have listed. So next after that, uh, we're going to be visiting uh, Ghana for the 24th Journey of a Lifetime. And with uh, this uh, Ghana journey, this is one of the few ones that we have had in the summer. This is the second one I've had in this uh, summer. I've had people request uh, to travel with us uh, in the summer for Ghana. So this is it right here. But after this year, uh, going back to uh, spring and then leave the summertime open and uh, just work. You know, work two journeys before summer and then two after. So, or two before summer and then one after uh, summer. And uh, scrolling down, the next uh, journey we have is our Egypt Roots and Culture Journey. Uh, so this is November 21st to December 2nd, and this will mark 20 years since I traveled to Africa and also 20 years uh, since I made the initial uh, journey to Egypt uh, in uh, 2004 with uh, Dr. Renoka Rashidi. So we have an incredible itinerary that we have uh, worked, together, worked together with my partners uh, in Egypt, uh, Matrell on a mission, and also this make sure it's laid out the way you just get a, the fullness of Egypt. So we, we have a nice coverage for Cairo, Luxor, Aswan, Abba Simbel, and also Urgada by the uh, Red Sea. Uh, so including that journey also is a nice uh, boat cruise for uh, three days on the Nile. So that's always one of those historical journeys if you've ever been to Egypt and, you know, uh, and you've never been on the Nile River. As far as like a boat cruise, this incredible experience. And while you're Traveling on the Nile, uh, we're going to stop by a few different um, historical places, and that's when you get your tour and also do your shopping and also just enjoy sightseeing. So looking to this, uh, looking forward to uh, that one. Um, you know, we finally got to where we can just uh, do a journey to Egypt, but uh, you know, we've made it to where you know, we've infused it with the Africa for the Africans energy of this, uh, you know, in including uh, social nightlife and uh, networking. And, and definitely um, we'll limit the uh, lectures and the lectures will be performed by the uh, guides at the museum and also the guides on the uh, tour bus. All right, and uh, just got back from uh, South Africa. So this is the journey that uh, we're looking to uh, get back to again. And this is uh, December 24th to January 4th. Uh, similar schedule, a few different adjustments, uh, but uh, it's still five days in Johannesburg and four days in Cape Town. And while you're in Johannesburg, uh, we'll have a one day uh, or a day safari in Palanisburg, where we'll go to uh, Palanisburg and then also head back to uh, Johannesburg. And then Cape, uh, then Cape Town uh, will be there for the uh, the new year. So uh, we'll be right there by the waterfront to enjoy this uh, nice uh, holiday time uh, in uh, South Africa. So for those who haven't been to South Africa, it's uh, you know, one of the more incredible countries um, in Africa. Uh, the one of the few bad things is the long ride and uh, you know it's it remind me of somewhat uh, similar to parts of Atlanta you know you have a rich city but then you have this unbelievable amount of homelessness and poverty so that's the part that would just throw you off after you see all this beauty and riches then you see you know see certain things so I got lots of videos up and looking to put more videos up of uh, the uh, last two journeys in uh, South Africa and also Tanzania uh, so those are you know, journeys that uh, take us away from our West Africa and put us in East Africa and uh, Southern Africa. And then we just talk about Egypt and North Africa. So it's giving you a good uh, flow of, uh, of schedule around African continent. All right, 2025, um, there's a few uh, schedules. Uh, Senegal and Gambia, uh, we'll see how that interest go. Uh, see who's uh, looking to uh, journey with us. Uh, that journey is coming up. Uh, it's been out for a while, so looking to see who's interested there. And also uh, looking to get back to Ghana in uh, May, uh, May 24th, uh, we usually get there May 25th, and that's Africa Day, and this will be the 25th uh, journey. And then also, uh, by by much respect, uh, got Brazil back on the tour schedule, so we're going to be doing uh, four, uh, four nights in Rio de Janeiro and four in Salvador, Bahia. So nice, uh, simple schedule, and... Uh, the schedule laid out to you. enjoy your beach time and just enjoy the tropical beauty of Brazil. And that'll be the that'll be the schedule for 2025. And not sure about anything for December, but uh just reducing the schedule from four to three and then looking to do this schedule of uh two to three a year and just uh work on some other things. 
So these are the different multiple countries uh, that we have on a schedule. This is altogether eight countries. And then we had Tanzania. The next go around, that would be nine. So this is a flow of uh, nine different countries, uh, the nine best countries that we can think of um, on the African continent that could give you an incredible roots and culture connection. And once you pass through the, onto the schedule, there's always one remind everyone, if you're looking for the conference call uh, dates and details, it's right here. Uh, this is for January 14th um, and the next one and the next one. And then you scroll down some more, um, all of the social links so you can uh, view any of the social details as far as pictures and videos. And we have Facebook uh, groups here and all these groups are um, filled up with this pictures, videos, links, and this information on, on what we've done in the past. And this is a list of all of our 34 journeys over the last 17 years. Uh, so fresh from South Africa, Tanzania. Um, this uh, these are recorded, these are these pictures are taken with this um, newer technology of camera. So as you can see, the photos are just a lot brighter. And they usually just get a lot brighter as time goes along and we have new equipment. But these are it's all pictures with all of our classic Africa Flappians t-shirt, all the different colors. So six unique different colors from uh, those tour groups. And I was working on the uh, one for Liberia today. And it's a blue shirt with uh, white writing and a red logo. Uh, so the same uh, red, uh, white, and blue are color of the US flag. But uh, you know, when you see our t-shirt color, very unique. So that would be another unique color on top of all of these colors. So we know we're people of color and energy, so always want to showcase that. So And then, you know, when we walk around with T-shirts, uh, our, our people in Africa just love the energy. So on that note, the uh, next thing I want to click on is uh, the YouTube page. And the YouTube page, I have a list of different playlists. So the main thing, if you want to see all of the uh, tours in the past, you go to the multiple playlists and you'll see them right here. South Africa, Tanzania, Ghana. And then this library one is just a, a whole lot of preparation of videos that we've done in interviews. Um, and as I, I was mentioning before, we put a ridiculous more time into making this library journey exceptional. And it's one of those things where you, know, you just may never get the opportunity again. And, and it's one of those things where you just need to make the best first impression. Uh, so we're working hard at it. Uh, over the period of time, we have a nice uh, group ready to go. And uh, and as just like the flow of the uh, tour photos and the history of the uh, the, uh, the, tour, uh, the the tour videos and the tour details, it's all matched up with uh, this uh, playlist full of videos. And as time go along, I add more South Africa videos and Tanzania videos. Uh, those are the next thing I need to add more. Of. I'm almost finished with the last uh, Ghana videos. I think I have about five to 10, about 10 more videos. And these are all short clips and it's just information to get out and just showing just our highlights and you know what we do. And the same for Black Star Pan African community. Um look into this uh put some more updated uh videos. We have more videos updated on our WhatsApp page, but these are just the the, the ones uh that we have just a lot more organized that I've done. Then when you uh go to uh Facebook, you just click on photos. And then you click on albums. And again, uh, with South African Tanzania, um, since I'm back from both of those journeys, I'll be uploading more uh, photos um, to both of these galleries. But I have a uh, completed uh, Tanzania gallery on uh, with uh, Google Photos that's posted to our group page and uh, posted to also the uh, Facebook uh, page. And as far as South Africa, I got the half of that uh, gallery completed and Looking to uh, complete the other half in the next uh, few days where this uh, shows um, Cape Town. But for now, uh, what you see is uh, all of uh, Johannesburg. And so just uh, posting uh, the details around all the different uh, platforms. And you, know, you scroll down, you just see this uh, unique group photos. And this goes all the way down to uh, 2006. So this consistent documentation for 17 straight years. And now we're ready to set off year number 18. Another thing I want to share is this. Uh, this is the uh, the uh, newsletter, and this is something I share, and this has all of the updated links and details in this 
showcase the, the same thing, group photos and uh, links to videos and just uh, updates and details for upcoming conference calls. All right, so family, let me stop here and open things up for our questions. Uh, that way we can go into details on anything further. Um, you know, since we have a lot of schedulers, uh, so much we can go into. I uh, primarily went into the uh, library since uh, that's the next journey that we're taking. But uh, anyone who have any uh, questions, just um, unmute yourself, give your name, uh, where you're calling from, or what journey you're traveling with I us. I would like to say, say something. Uh, Ronnie Kanzler from Los Angeles. I was wanting to go zip lining when we go to Liberia. So okay. I will try and get some more information and give to you. All right. Um, yes, absolutely. Uh, um, I need some kind of location and things like that. So, and uh, beyond that, uh, Sister Wayne, um, let me know if you're up. Uh, let me know if there's a place that uh, Ronnie and uh, Juma can go zip lining. They're traveling with us to uh, Liberia. Uh, Wayne is one of Wayne is our tour operator and organizer on the ground. Dear in Liberia, um, even though she's also here. So when you oh, she is? Uh, when your line is muted, uh, just unmute it if you're up. Uh, yes, she's also in the group page. Huh. So uh, that's all I'm saying. Uh, but how did you find out about information? Because if you found out about it, you got to know some kind of location because you got to give us something. I just Googled it. I just I was just Googled it one day. I just wrote the name. It was Hot Springs. It, it, that's all it said. It didn't give me a location or nothing, but I'll do some more work and get, get you location. All right, uh, absolutely, definitely. Yeah, enjoy your zip line and, and things. I'll, mm -hmm. just, uh, I'll just record the video and I'll make sure that, you know, we have some medical kits that, are, you know. All right, it's cool. Definitely. My life insurance paid. <laughs> I was saying, you know, these are dangerous things. You know, we have to be, you have to be prepared and be safe. Uh, hi, hi, peace, everyone. Um, this is Till Ellington from uh, Philadelphia. Uh, this will be my uh, second trip going with them. Uh, I enjoy Tanzania. Um, I was just also um when we go to South Africa, um, is it a lot of? Can we check and see if any um mass years to do um prayer or something during that time? I don't know. I don't know the structure of South Africa. Uh yes. Um, I don't either. Uh, as far as <laughs> things, but uh, what we do is uh we'll get our uh, tour guides to uh, assist you and um. The, <laughs> No issue with uh, working it out. Okay. Uh, so, and it's something to work out ahead of time, too. So I got you on that. Uh, yeah. Just, uh, you know, well, you was able to work it out in our Tanzania the last time. Yeah, we were. <laughs> and, our, and our brother, they were very helpful with you. So that's. Yes. I appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. Looking, forward, Looking to forward to meet everyone, too. Oh, yeah. Definitely. As a kid, you smile and look very excited. Uh, just uh, unmute yourself. I did. I am. You know, I, I am. I'm very. I am very excited. And um, when Till was asking about the message, I knew he had already asked you about that. I was like, "Say, oh, I already asked her, but I knew she couldn't hear me say it. I already asked. I had already asked you, but I am. I'm excited. And um, I just. I mean, I was really looking over everything again today, actually. So. That's why I got on late because I was looking over everything step by step for South Africa, what you were doing. So, yeah, I, I do have people that's going, so I'm excited. I'm real gonna know about it. You look puzzled. Oh, and no, I'm looking at a comment uh, about zipline. Oh, no. uh, Wayne, when no. you get a chance, uh, you can just unmute yourself and you can talk about zipline, and so you can give some uh, clarity and detail. I've been ziplining before, but I mean, I haven't ziplined in Africa, in, in Africa or anything, but I have ziplined like three times already. So, it's fun. and they want to do it. I'm like, that's exciting. Yes. Yes, it is. It is. I've been about three times too. Yeah. So it's, it's nice. It's good. But I don't think I want to do it again. I think I'm stopping now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not push myself. <laughs> what so, about bungee jumping? Um, I was gonna do bungee jumping, but somebody died the day before I was gonna do it, so I get I, I changed my mind on that one. <laughs> I ain't doing that one. That's a no no. Yeah. Um, I would probably do it though. Mm. I don't know. I probably would do it. Mm -hmm. I'm adventurous. Mm. So we'll see.
Well, and uh, while well, you're in South Africa, I got lots of other adventurous things for you to do. Uh, so we have uh, the uh, cable cars up to uh, Table Mountain. So that's always fun and exciting. And then uh, for those who are looking to travel to Brazil, the same thing too, cable cars that take you from uh, one mountain to the next. And so it gives you an incredible view of the uh, you know, the city, you're all the way up there. So hopefully no one is scared of heights and things like that uh, when, you, when you travel with us. Um, but uh, if you are, I would just say, just go with the floor and hold on to someone. And just enjoy your adventure because if you don't go up and enjoy that adventure, you're going to just regret it and you're going to... You know, you, you know, you it's one of those things. So to avoid your regrets, this uh this uh enjoy everything that we're gonna schedule. All right, so family line is uh open. And also uh Wayne, if you can hear us, uh when you get a chance, if you could just unmute yourself, uh so we can uh, talk about uh Liberia. I'm uh, go ahead. This is Sion and hey, Courtney. Um, question. When is the last day to pay um, the last payment? Is it in May or March? That's like uh, two, three months before we travel. It's uh, flexible. Okay. And another thing for the conference, is it possible that we could set up... Um, where we could have a couple of builders involved and um, talk about, you know, the different options that we have compared to the last time, if it's possible this time. Uh, yes, as far as builders, um, let me see, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Uh, yes, uh, all those builders that you, um, that's building our black side, those are builders that are recruited. So yes, um, I can call, I can see who can um, be there directly. Okay. And uh, while you're there, if uh, you need to meet more than one or two, we can also mm -hmm. set that up for those who just want to talk with some builders. Uh, yeah. Even, uh, even uh, outside of conference and then uh, mm -hmm. yeah, get to uh, the actual land site. I'll see who's scheduled to be working that day. So, you know, we can pull up on them and you know, they can just tell us, tell us what they're doing. Yeah, that's a good idea. There's a few houses that are still being worked on in mm -hmm. um, Tennessee. Uh, they, they may they they may or may not be finished by that time. So the, there's a good chance of getting them around. So mm -hmm. I appreciate the um, you know the recommendation. That's a good idea. I will yes. Work on getting one or two to be at a conference and then some to be on the site. Yes, that sounds good. That would definitely it's definitely a good game plan. I need to fire some of David people that he hired to bring to the conference anyway. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes you just got to get rid of people, man. I'm just, you know, I, know. Uh, I, just, hard. <laughs> I, I usually just leave them alone, let them do the conference because, you know, I'll just be, I'll I know. Just be always fighting and striving for perfection. So I end up just getting rid of everybody. <laughs> you know, a few people there that's been there that um, don't really care to keep bringing back. Uh, it doesn't really, they're taking up time slots of other people to talk mm -hmm. about them. and then things in, into repatriation like building. So, yeah, which makes me, this is that is what we're interested in, this, and especially <laughs> like an architect, you know, to give us an idea, you know, how much it costs to put a draft together and all the different stuff. You know, most of them were like selling, <laughs> to, to be honest with you, you know, their products. And, you know, it, we're, it's good that, you know, we have that information, but still, you know, we need to know about how to go about building, how much it costs. You know, we have questions that we like to ask. For instance, like um, seeing a sitting some wheelchair accessible buildings, you know, stuff like that. All right, so perfect. So uh, builders and then um, the other thing that goes with that uh, will be our uh, uh, shippers, uh, people that help mm -hmm. you ship. Uh, we do have um, one person that's uh, you know boom, that's been very you know you know very good with us. Uh, so definitely want to also invite him. So uh, you know, let me thought about that uh, last time um, at a conference. Uh, I just let's not have too many unnecessary people there. And yes. not the right people that needed to be there. But again, these are things I got to tell everyone with the program. I just have to just 
you know, just work it out uh, a lot of times and you're trying your best to hire certain people and get them to work with you and yeah, you know, I just have to get in the right direction to just do certain things but then mm -hmm. so I think it's just time for that change to just adjust a bunch of things at that conference and yes. yeah so, We'll definitely work on that. We have a good amount, you know, we have a good time to work on it for summer. Yes, that's right. We're looking forward to it. We're excited. Oh, uh, yes. And let me know if you want to stay back a week or two weeks. Or um, stay back we're actually going to stay at like what? Three days extra next time. <laughs> this time, I should say. Three days extra. I'll put the yeah. note of it. Uh, it's about <laughs> three days out well think about it uh, if you can squeeze it to make it a week yeah it's, i'm not the problem and courtney's the problem <clears throat> because of his job <laughs> so they're short stuff oh wow well, gotcha all right um yeah. don't work it out and yeah. we talk about it because we uh, we'll see where we can make the adjustments all right well that is perfect well that will work yeah all right, so most of the people here are coming to Liberia with us. Uh, Wayne, I'm not sure if you can hear us. I uh, just want to see if you can unmute yourself so you can talk more with us about the uh, Liberia journey. I think she said she wasn't ready to speak. I'd seen something in, in the chat. Uh, well, um, she's not ready to speak. Um, we're going to get cl we're closing soon, so that's why I'm trying to get her to say something. Well, Winnie, if you can say something, we'll just work it out another time. Uh, but um, let me see what else. I just see, looking at the chat. All right. All right, uh, June, uh, Ronnie, you guys have any oh. questions? Reference to Liberia, Dion. Hello, can you guys hear me? Uh, greens, waiting. Hey, how's everything? All right, doing well. Uh, doing well. A few, of, few of the uh, members uh, that travel with us are here. Uh, Ronnie, Dion. Hey, Africa mm. for the Africans. <laughs> sorry for my uh, um, Teresa. For me being mute for most of the time. Sorry. No, I mean it's fine. I was just trying to get you to share some information about Liberia. Yeah. And then so, uh, if the uh -huh. questions, they can just, you know, just uh, reach out to you with the questions um, when to, once you're finished. Okay, so everybody in this group, right, are the ones that's traveling um, for this Not, upcoming trip, right? Some people are traveling to different countries, but um, I was mentioning oh, okay. uh, Rani, Dion, uh, Teresa, and Juma, four people that travel with us to Liberia are on. And... Um, and I also went over some of the details, but wanted you to this, you know, give an introduction about Liberia and uh, just let it, you know let us know what uh, to expect. Uh, you and I will. Itinerary looks uh, good and everything, but uh, uh, it's, it's one of those things where I've physically seen the country and you know been connected to. It. So you can just let us know how we'll feel when we get to the country and you know what to expect. And this, any other general details that you'd like to share? Okay, uh, Ronnie, Dion, and the other two, I forgot your names uh, already. Juma, Sorry. And, Juma and Teresa. Teresa and Juma. Nice to meet you guys. Um, yeah, <laughs> my name is Wendy Ahmed. Um, I'm actually first generation uh, Liberian American, but since I was small, I always had a, a deep love for Liberia. Uh, not necessarily because my parents are from there, because I always had the privilege of traveling to other African countries. But with Liberia, you always feel like, even if it's your first time, even if you don't know anybody, you always feel welcome. And I'm very critical. People will say, oh, yeah, that's because your, your parents are from Liberia. Yeah, and they. You know, my parents are Liberian, but then again, my mom has more allegiance to Ghana because she was born in Ghana <laughs> and she was raised in Ghana and she has a Ghanaian accent. But when it comes to Liberia, Liberia is just a different country. Liberia is very welcoming and you will see that when you get there. And if you guys have any um, chances or opportunities to be in the midst of Liberian people in America, you will see that uh, personality wise, culturally wise, we we're much more different than other Africans. 
And I guess it, it has to do with a lot of our history as well. I don't know, have you guys uh, ever interacted with other Liberian people before? I know the last time we met, like a month ago on Zoom, one lady from New York, I can't remember her name, she said that she went to college with a few Liberians. Which one? Oh, I guess she's not online today. Hello, Hello? Sister Kubi. I'm here. Oh, okay, yeah. Hello, you. Sister Kubi. Savannah, Savannah State College. It's a university okay, Savannah now. State. Yeah, yeah, you see that Liberians are much more different. and You are. You're right. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're more outgoing. We're mm -hmm. African at the same time. We still have our culture, but at the same time, we, we have a lot of Caribbean and American influence. Yes. So, yeah. Even when it comes down to, like, the way we talk, the way we dress, when you come to mm -hmm. Liberia, you will see, like, mm -hmm. when you go to compare to other African countries, you will take notice, like, because I, I personally, I did one year in Mali, in Bamako, Mali. Mm -hmm. as a college, yeah, mm -hmm. as a college student, it's a huge difference. When, mm -hmm. you, go, when you see the, the, the style of dress, for yeah. people to wear African clothes on a daily is very hard. And mm -hmm. I know the, the mission of this organization is Africa for the Africans, yeah. But at the same time, we I just want to take note that, or let you guys take note that we have mm -hmm. a lot of large influences from America and the Caribbean due to our history. And mm -hmm. because of that, I think it makes it easier for the visitor to kind of like, to blend in and to get a hang of everything. And nobody will stare at you funny compared to other African countries. Yeah, <laughs> we're accepting, you know, uh, we're, we're very laid back, easygoing people. If I have to compare Liberian people with any other type of people, maybe I will compare it with, I can say, Hawaiians. Because I used to live in Hawaii in 2009. And I was like, yeah, Hawaiians have a lot of similarities with Liberians. Well, we're very laid back, easygoing. We like to party. We like to eat good food. You know. <laughs> Mrs. Ahmed. Yes? Is there a strong Islamic influence in Liberia? No. Uh, not really. Not really, but what I would say that, let me be honest with you, it's growing now. The Liberians that you see here in America, let me be honest with you, during the war, all those who can leave the country left. Mm -hmm. So the ones you see back, you will see like, yeah, the Islamic influence is a lot now. And that's because you will see, like when you go to Monrovia, those that left the village end up staying in Monrovia. And that's who's there now. <laughs> it's it's kind of like, it's, it's almost like how you hear the Africa brain drain, but in an instance, it's like, Everybody during the war that can leave Liberia left during that time. I'm not saying to scare you, but, and everybody who had that opportunity, those who had the upper hand, let me be honest with you, were the Christians. Not by choice, but it's just, just the way it is. If you had an English name, you were most likely mm -hmm. associated with the America or Congo Liberian. So even though Christianity still have a stronghold in Liberia, you will see Islamic influences, especially around the coastal areas. Hmm. and like around the mountains let me say that the the islamic people mostly live traditionally they're from the mountain areas but because a lot of these islamic people are traders especially when it comes to fulani people mm -hmm. yeah. they move from place to place yeah uh -huh. what does that mean? nomadic uh-huh yeah, okay. Well, so you me now. I don't, uh, excuse me. Uh, Bomani, I'll talk to you later. I don't feel well, so I won't be able to chit chat like usual. So I'm signing out now, okay? Oh, okay. I know we we'll appreciate your energy now. I'll connect with you okay. later. Bye bye. God bless everybody. Okay, bye -bye. Hope you feel better. Okay, talk to you next time. Thank All you. Right, take care. Bye bye. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I can share with you guys maybe a link. So we do have like, the same with most West African countries, we do have uh, certain groups of people that's in charge of certain things. Uh, when it comes to Fulani people, mm -hmm. when it comes to milk cows, <laughs> mm -hmm. 
traders, you know, stuff like that deals with food. That's them. I just sent you a link so you can see how they live nomadically. I don't know if you guys can see it. I just sent a link on Zoom. I was just looking at this video the other day. All right, let me ask, check out the link you sent. All right, so what I can do is uh, let me just uh, do a screen sharing. Okay. But yeah, the Islamic influence is there, but it's not to the point where it's like Nigeria, where uh, they go by Sharia law in certain areas. No, at the end of the day, Christianity remains the most powerful religion in Liberia, and culturally, uh, America remains, like, sorry to say, for those who's interested in pro-Black and African, it still remains, it has a strong call of Liberia. When I say American, I won't say American mainstream, but maybe late 1800, early 1900, Southern American charm culture. If that makes sense to you guys, if you get what I'm trying to say, that Southern charm culture, it still remains powerful in Liberia. Like when you, you greet somebody, you will still kiss somebody on the cheek. Do you understand? And here we go, um, Bound County, Liberia. So let me know if you can see it, Wayne, so I can uh, play it. Oh, okay. And how much of it do you want me to play? Oh, no, I just I mean, it doesn't matter. I just want you guys to see that, you know, there's, Liberia is a, is a vast country, you know, and there's different people with different cultures, but we all get along. And these are some of the Islamic communities that you will see. And these are mainly Fulani herdsmen, but these are not Fulani people that you will see like in Nigeria. Fulani people in Liberia are totally different. Fulani people, mm -hmm. well, I would say the difference is with other African countries, um, these nomadic people, they have to conform to the to the culture that was already there. We don't conform to them, if that makes sense. We don't twist our religion or our culture because it might offend anybody. Liberian mainstream culture is basically Southern American mixed with African, mixed with Caribbean, mixed with uh that southern charm. So you're not gonna get any type of uh that type of strict religious dogma. No, it's not like that. But what I was saying is it's it's very common for a Liberian man who's Muslim to have a Christian wife. That one is very common. <laughs> Nobody cares in Liberia. It's very common. Okay. Is, uh -huh. and, uh, let me uh, play some of this video and then we're going to get start wrapping it up to close. Okay, no problem. And anything you want to say about this video, just play some of it. Okay. I can't just see the video. Now I'm saying do you want to play all of it or just some of it? I just wanted you to see, like, maybe how the Fulani herds might look like. All right, let me just play some of this. So even with that, they still have their... Mm -hmm. Okay, this thing is recording. So we came to do a drone shot of the cows. Remember, I did a video here before, and I wanted to get a drone shot. But man, I saw those things that moving in group just now. I almost ran away. <laughs> then at some point, they stood up, and like, they just watch it. I said, my God, the cows are hearing the sound of the drone. And it's very interesting. I had to run away and leave. Okay, so now they directed them all the way on the other side here. So we go on that
So yeah, Liberia, Liberia is a very green country, as you can see. You should have seen me sweating, Jasmine. I can't get tired coming to this spot whenever I'm here. Hello, Papa. Ah, not bad, oh. Are you taking care of the cows, eh? Okay. I came here before, but I saw, I didn't see anybody. One of the cows were here eating at the time. <laughs> yes, yeah, so the cow who taking care of it. I just saw him just now. Right, so I guess you wanted to show the uh, countryside. Uh huh. So, all right, so uh, family, uh, let me know if anyone have any questions for Wayne that's uh, looking to travel with us uh, to uh, Liberia. The the guy that asked me the question, he's the one who's traveling to Liberia, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, and you you want to get connected with the Muslim people there or something, or you want a brief history? Um. No, I. I really was just interested in what, what the social structure was like there, being that maybe it might be, because uh, um, when we go to different countries, you know, we try to be as respectful and familiarize ourselves with the customs there as much as possible. Um, so I wanted to know if, um, if, if the Christian were the majority and the Muslims were the minority, right? And, and basically what the political structure was there like, if people from America were looking to repatriate to um, to Liberia. Uh, okay, so um, right now in the country, uh, Christianity is the number one religion in Liberia. But when you go to the city, the capital, Monrovia, Liberia, you will probably think it's maybe half and half. Or you will probably think that the Muslim people are more in the country versus the Christians. But in actuality, it's more Christians than Muslims. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it still doesn't matter. Uh, Liberia is like a, is a very pro-Christian country. It's not, it's not a country where you have to follow certain guidelines or certain rules. You just behave as if you would respect it. Uh, you know, you just, you behave as if you would behave going to any other country. It's not like to say, oh, we're very strict. You can't do this. You can't, no. I mean, it's not like that. It's not like that at all. Like, after I left uh, Mali in 2004, I went to Liberia. It was like, I felt so free. <laughs> Honestly, I feel so free. I know Mali has changed now, but when I was in Mali in 2004, it was very strict. I couldn't do this. I couldn't do that. I couldn't, you know, it was so many rules that I didn't have to adhere to when I finally went to Liberia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you feel, you feel a sense of freedom. Honestly, what Liberian people always say is like, we always say Liberia is a land of the free. And it's true. Ain't no place free freer than Liberia. <laughs> that country is free. I can say it's lawless, but it's very free. Honestly, you feel more free in Liberia than you ever do in America. Yes, I, that's a that's a scary thought. Uh, being free and then lawless. Yeah, I thought oh. she said. <laughs> did she say lawless? <laughs> no, I said it's not like it's not like it's lawless, but it's very free. Honestly, it's oh, free. No, no. We still have. Gotcha. respect for each other no it's, it's not law as i said it's not like, <laughs> yeah people still have respect for each other you know but it's not like it's not so consuming like when you're in america you just don't feel free you just don't feel free at all i can show you a video if you don't mind of a new park that they just built it just came up on my, just in case you want to spend like a day just, I don't know, at the beach side. It's downtown. There's a new park they just built. In case you want to show that a little bit. 
Let me see what you got. The, the George Mill government just built it as its exit from government. Uh, do you have this thing on Facebook? Is this? Yeah, this all on Facebook. <laughs> looks much better on Facebook. I mean, uh, not Facebook, uh, YouTube. Oh, okay. Let me check to see if this one lady will have it on her website. She uh, normally does. I'll pull it up on YouTube real quick and play it. Okay, let me I see. Wonder what it would be. It's one librarian blogger. Maybe you guys should check her out too. Her name is Loretta. Right, she, uh, a video from Fizzle. Oh, you seen oh. her videos before? No, just sorry. I'm just putting it up on YouTube. Let me just show okay. it on YouTube. Welcome guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Like always, I am your favorite Liberian boy. Today we are at PHP. Park. Now, I did a video about the Invisible Park last year. I'm going to link that video either up here or up here. And in that video, we discussed about this park being built at the time, and now it's completed. So I'm going to be giving you guys a tour of the park. Let's go. All right, so we'll start from here, which is the Unification Square. Now, the Unification Square is a place that is part of Liberian's history. If you remember, I wasn't around at that time, but if you were around at that time, this was where the execution took place, you know, way back. And in remembrance of that, this was why they built this monument and they liberated the Unification Square. So let's move over to the next part of this park. Okay, guys, so this is the first volleyball court out of two volleyball courts at the Liberia Unification Park, uh, which is in PHP. And um, this is a full court. You can play six on six here on this court, and uh, we'll be seeing the other one further down. But let's move on to the next area, which is where they play the beach soccer, just in case you're a football fan. Let's go. <laughs> Okay, guys, so this is where the beach soccer is being played. They play six on six with one person in the goalpost as the goalkeeper. So that's 16 with one goalkeeper, 16 with one goalkeeper. That's seven on seven. And if you calculate this, you can hold 14 persons. So from here, we'll be going to the baseball field. You understand? In Liberia, um, the ladies play kickball and they use the baseball field to play kickball. Yesterday I was here, they were playing kickball. If you're watching from any part of the world, comment down in the comment section if you know about kickball. Ball. Let's move on to the next place. I think this is a better video right here. I just seen it on YouTube. All right, guys, so this is what the baseball pitch looks like. And as you can see, there is sand in between the grass. That's where people run. And for all the circles you see within the sand area, that's the base, first base, second base, third base. In other countries, okay. baseball with a bat. In Liberia, we play kickball. The ladies, most especially the ladies, play kickball. And they use their feet to play kickball. I wish we had some of them here playing so that I could show you what it looks like. But, you know, I came early in the morning, so, you know, probably Probably in the evening hours they'll be here. Let's move over to the next area. So guys, as you can see right now, I am trying to burn some calories. No, I'm just joking. But this is the manual outdoor gym they have here. There are two spaces with this particular type of gym here at the PHP Unification Park. This is one space. We'll be seeing the other one further. And you know, if you don't have a gym that you go to or maybe your gym membership is expired, come to PHP Park, man. This is practically free for everybody to enjoy. By the way, the entrance in here is free too. So so you don't have to pay anything at the door. Let's move on to the next part.
All right, guys, so this is a sand pit. Now, this sand pit is for those of you who like to jog and those of you who like to do physical workout without gym equipment. This is just an extra space for people to exercise and, you know, have fun. So let's move over to the next field, which is the carpet football field. Let's move on. All right, guys, so this is the second football field, and this one is unique because this one doesn't have sand. Well, I hope you can hear me the last video. I just sent you my video. You love playing soccer, but you don't like the last video is on YouTube. because you know the sand can hold your legs. This is another option for you. Do you understand? Now, this is a carpet grass field. With this field, it's like basically playing at a stadium. They have two goalposts. You can play seven on seven, which is 14 person, one person <laughs> as the team. This is nice, man. And you also have places around for people to sit and watch the game. So let's move over to the next area, which is the court, the basketball court, and show you how it looks like. So guys, this is the executive basketball court. Now this one is reserved for bookings, just in case, you know, you and some friends want to come and play on a certain day at a certain time. You can come here, hit up the management and book a time to rent the court. You understand? This is one out of two courts. Now there's another court on the other side that we'll be going to later on. So without further ado, let's move on to the next place. All right, guys. So this is the second gym. I told you guys yet. All right, uh, so we appreciate uh, sharing that. So uh, that is a beautiful look uh, for Liberia. And um, as most of what you see in West Africa is just, as time go along, you just see the growth and the beauty. So definitely looking forward to uh, exploring more of those things there in uh, Liberia. Uh, but before I close, I was uh, checking to see if anybody have any questions, if anybody want to talk about anything else. Uh, and also, uh, Dion, uh, Wayne is connecting. Uh, Dion, um, anything you want to share, or anything you want to say? Um, I don't, I don't really have any questions. It's pretty self-explanatory. Just uh, ready to get to another country. All right, excellent, brother. That will work. Uh, we're almost there. All right, Wayne. Uh, before we close, uh, anything else you want to share? All right, so family, I appreciate everybody joining us. Oh, uh, sorry, I, I was talking on mute the whole time. My bad, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't realize I was on mute. I was just saying that I can't wait to meet everybody. And for anybody that wants to do anything specific, just let me know in advance. We will accommodate you guys. All right, perfect. So everyone, um, Winnie is on the uh, library or group chat with us. Uh, so, And then when we do some uh, private library uh, conference, uh, then... Um, you can just, uh, you know, we can talk about more things uh, in detail also. Yeah, and Juma, Juma, he's the 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 guy that who's interested in um Islam in Liberia, right? Well, yeah. just, overall, a just a culture. Yeah, he had. Don't you want to become a Muslim? You, you said you wanted to become a, a Muslim, right? No, I didn't say that. I'm just interested in the culture. Okay. Oh, okay. I was just asking because... um. You know, they might have some programs during that time because it will be Ramadan in case you you want us to, you know, just accommodate you and maybe invite you to meet up with one of the caliphates or somebody. Mm -hmm. so, you know, it will be the fast month just in case you might have interest. Just let me know in advance. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Juma, right? Juma Rafiki. Okay, Juma Rafiki. Mm -hmm. That means friend. <laughs> hey. Uh -huh. Ronnie didn't even know that. <laughs> I've known him for 20 years. He didn't know that. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so if you're interested in some of the Islamic celebrations, just let me know. I get invited to a lot over there. So. Sure, we'll get to it when we get there. Uh -huh. right, let me know in advance beforehand. Yeah, he got you. He got you. Uh -huh. Nice meeting you guys. Yeah, nice to meet you, too. All right, uh, so you signed off. I will appreciate you, everybody. Uh, so, and if anybody else needs to talk with me uh, directly, you can just uh, call me uh, throughout the week uh, beyond that. Uh, for the next few journeys that we have coming, um, I'll be posting this information little by little on the uh, group WhatsApp page. Uh, but beyond that... Uh, hey, Bomani, I got one question. Just send you a copy of my top, the um, my passport. 
Uh, just like the image I posted, uh, exactly okay. that image, and then that's it. Uh, All that right, cool. our payment, and then we'll get it done so we can get it out. All, the right. Way. All right, cool. Nice. All right, perfect. Also, uh, before I go, uh, Teresa, you you're up. Greetings, Bomani. Greetings, uh, Teresa. Greetings, uh, so, uh, thank you for this. Uh, for sending your information in for us to get your um Liberia visa, and as you can see, it was nice and smooth, and um, that yes, is it went very smooth. So, Wayne, uh, the. Uh, uh, new one um, assisted us uh, in getting our visa. So I saw oh, that, uh, me and Teresa a uh, visa and that came back quick. So oh, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, yeah, so just always trying to uh, find different ways for us to just make it more efficient and make it work. And uh, that's the same thing that we did uh, also when we was in uh, Senegal and Gambia. Uh, we had, you know, remember, we had a few people who came on like two days before we traveled, a few days before we traveled. Um, just had the tour guides uh, just get the visa at embassy. So that works out good. And I, was, I wish I had something simple like that in uh, Ghana. But uh, the good thing about Ghana, when you do go to the embassy, they do give you a five-year visa. So for those who right. travel to Ghana with us, uh, that that process, even though it's long, is it, still uh, the best process for you to get the five-year visa. And the best thing to do is to work on it uh, three to four uh, months before we travel. So for those who are uh, listening to the call and uh, getting ready to travel to Ghana with us, let's make sure we get those visas out ahead of time. And you know, the online process is a little painful, but you know you work at it. Uh, after a few days, you'll get it done. But uh, yes, I mean, those are the difference in uh, the visas. But uh, uh -huh. Brazil give you, you know, when Brazil was giving out visas, they gave out ten year visas. But now they oh, don't. Wow. Now they don't do any visas anymore. And in Ghana, for the most part, um, uh, three, four, five years for multiple entry for one hundred dollars. So economically, uh, the Ghana visa, you know, worked out the best. Yeah, five uh, years is a long time. So, and that's what I was uh, when I was talking with Kyle, I was telling him about as far as marketing of the, um, you know, the, the country. Uh, that um, these are these are the, these are some of the reasons why you have people going to Ghana more openly. Oh and, yeah, for sure. And, now that's just one of many uh, different things. Uh, even the visa process, it's you know, it's it's online. Uh, you know, everything is typed up online, and you print it off, then you mail it in. So we just got to get more advanced in Liberia, and more upbeat, and um, and hopefully the new government is you know, is down to you know build real tourism in a country and um, create some incentive for people to travel to the country, visit the country, because you know it's, mm -hmm. it's hard for us to do this, trying to get people to come to the country, and it's like. Honestly, there's like no incentive or no encouragement. Uh, and then and the reason why I said about encouragement because other countries, you know, offer those things. Like I just came back from South Africa. None of us had to do a visa. So. Yeah, but you have to look at it along with along with that. You get South Africa crime. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's, it's you know it's, it's it's competition. So in in order. It's a pro and con to everything. Huh? It's a pro and con to everything. You can't walk down the street. In Johannesburg at night and feel safe. <laughs> so uh, it, it you know it really depends on where you're in Johannesburg. Um, if I'm deep into the city, um, no, I don't advise that with uh, my members or uh, people who just traveling with us. But uh, if, and then same thing if you're in Cape Town and you're in uh, certain districts, uh, you know you're fine. Uh, but later night time, you know you definitely have to be wary wherever you are. Uh, we take it oh, for, for sure. granted. We take it for granted in Ghana because we're so used to walking in that neighborhood for so many years. Uh, mm -hmm. No matter where we move at night, yeah. But uh, yeah, as far as uh, South Africa, it has the aspects of those things. But you know, the, the, it's very unfortunate. But uh, the rest of the country got it going on to where, from incredible safaris, even even other parts of Johannesburg outside of the city, it's just basically all new neighborhoods. Okay. So, so yeah, then, don't don't mind me. I was just I was just. Teasing no, about. I mean you you bring up a great point because we have to. You know, it's the same thing I was telling people in Cape Town and. You know, you know, we move around, so we kind of see certain things. And, you know, you're just, mm -hmm. you're just advising us because, you know, we're more in the mindset of tourism and, you know, we're not trying to go anywhere to to be out like that. But, uh, uh, yes, that's one of the great concerns. So it's the same thing even when we're in Liberia, um, when we're staying at the Colony Inn, just wanting to make sure that people are in a certain neighborhoods when they're in any kind of city. 
just like when we in uh, Ghana, we stay in uh, this East Lagoon and keep away from certain parts of the city because that part of the city is usually infested with you know, many different things. But uh, back to you, uh, you Teresa, uh, <laughs> you're excited for another journey. <laughs> yeah. Yes, so, absolutely. So, Give thanks. Yeah, so Wayne, this is uh, you know, Teresa. I'm not sure uh, hey. if you've seen Teresa before, one of our good sisters looking to. Yeah, I think, I think we spoke. Is that the one that went to Savannah State? No, that was Akubi. So you're going to oh, meet a lot of new I'm people. Sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, Akubi won't be on, on there to Liberia with us. But, uh, oh, okay. Uh, but uh, yes. Uh, nice so, to meet you, Teresa. So as you can nice see. Nice to meet you as well. And thank you for your help with the visa. You know, it was actually a new yeah, one. New one, new one was oh. the, uh, is, is another tour. Um, is another is another one of our tour organizers that's there. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. So. Well, for everybody traveling, it went very smoothly. We got the PFI and the JPEG, and no problem. Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, Wayne is the one that uh, assists me with modifying the new itinerary that uh, me and New One uh, worked on. So. Uh, we added a lot of the nice tropical places. So uh, this uh, working with a team full of us in Liberia to this bring something exceptional because the goal ultimately uh, is try to build that energy in Liberia and just make that connection from Ghana to Liberia. Um, me personally, I'm not interested in honestly any of the other countries. I mean, I go there, you know, because it's, it's business and it's connections and networking. Uh, I, you know, South Africa is nice, but I wouldn't trade South Africa in for, for anything, you know, for what we have going on in West Africa. They can have all their fancy riches and things like that. And it's, it's nice and it's beautiful there in infrastructure. But uh, the goal is for us to work together to, to build those things in West Africa. So, you know, it belongs. So it's, you know, it's our, you know, it's our investment. I just feel like I'm somewhere in another part of just uh, America, uh, sometimes in South Africa, where it's just, you know, where it's the, the usual stuff, uh, especially when you go places and, you know, you just you're the shock because you're just like the only black person there, or the only, mm -hmm. and then you you know you're there in Africa. It's just you know it's 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 a little different, but you know you try to appreciate uh, the, all the beauty, all the energy in different parts of Africa. But as far as if someone, when people ask me about what is what feels like home to you, where should we build the future? Where should we do things? It's it's never changed from the beginning. It's always been like Ghana, right there in West Africa. And once we build more of the energy in Liberia, and that's what I'm trying to get my brother. The uh, uh, college genesis who you see me with uh, to this uh, work on some other things so we can really get things in place so we can just build a strong you know build, build a strong energy uh, Ghana to Liberia because um, historically it's always been that way right Rainy uh, it's always been a great connection between Ghana and Liberia um, oh yeah and so and from Gold Coast days we always had that connection this is our Black Pan African countries uh it's uh, it's like ninety nine percent of us uh, <laughs> I'm telling you. And I, and I don't mean to keep on talking about South Africa, but it's uh, uh I went to Mandela Square uh, in uh, Santon and I just looked around and I was like, wow. And I, you know, I walk up into the mall and, and as soon as I saw the Rolex store, I walk right back out. <laughs> Why? I'm like, you know, I, you know, you, Rolex and then the, so it shows you that it has all this great riches, but along with all yeah. that, it's an incredible level it. of poverty. And I love, love just, you know, th certain things. What I like about West Africa is just more balanced. Like um, if someone asks me, where do you see more poor people or homeless people? I'll tell them South Africa. Then they ask me about Ghana. I was like, we usually don't even see people. Like uh, you will see more in one day in South Africa than you see the whole time in Ghana. Okay. Or I, I would just basically I'll say, I saw more in South Africa or I should say Johannesburg. Then I saw in my trips to um, Ghana, Senegal, and Gambia. Oh, even, wow. Even really? Gambia, as poor as Gambia is, you, you're just not going to see a bunch of zinc fences and, and a bunch of people just laying all over the place. It's just, it's a, that's what I'm saying. It's like the weirdest thing. The, the, the part of Africa with the best infrastructure for one, one of the more incredible landscape like Cape Town. And even Cape Town, as soon as you walk out of that beautiful district, then you just, then you're somewhere that you know that you start talking about with danger and things like that so um but um you know it's tourism so you know all, the nice areas that they have in cape town and johannesburg they got security everywhere and they got uh, cameras everywhere and uh, okay. for the most part you're safe and as long as you stay in those zones but um 
I like the feel of West Africa. You know, all the countries I mentioned that we've been into, it's just been. You go there and you see, you see you and you see your people, and anyone, anyone else you see is just a small percentage of foreigners and things like that. So I would think that that's the way it is in Liberia, and just looking forward to it to see more of us, so get more of us to connect and work together. Yeah, and. You know, I still love, you know, even Tanzania, the same thing. When I went to Zanzibar Island, the beach, uh -huh. sometimes, you know, people are looking at you like, why aren't you, you know, taking orders or something, you know, because it's just like white folks everywhere. And then, you're, you know, you're moving around and, you know, and people wonder like, what are you doing here? It's the weirdest yeah. thing you get and things. But, you know, you enjoy yourself and have a good time. But, you know, you you, you feel the, 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 the tension and the energy and, and things like that. But, uh. That's just the feeling to you know to share with everybody. That's the feeling we just don't get in West Africa. So I'm always like pushing what we're doing. Like people are like, why you spend so much time in West Africa? Because it's just it's a part of Africa that you know it's just different and it's just for us and it's probably our only last chance to build like this beautiful black enterprise empire. Honestly, yeah. So it's true. So that's why you know I've been you know working very hard with you on this uh, because I just want to make it exceptional and I don't you know not taking it for granted about the future. It's like, let's get this done right. Get it uh -huh. done work and attract all the people to us so we can kind of really just start mobilizing because my fear is you know, this, the, the situation in East Africa and Southern Africa that, you know, you have more of these multinational corporations and white folks just literally just living all over the place. I mean, literally I was driving in part to Cape Town and I was talking to the tour guide. I was like, I was like, uh, what kind of black people live in these areas? It was like, black people don't live in these areas. It's all white folks. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, it's, it was like that. <laughs> I mean, and, you know, you see certain similar neighborhoods where, you know, still it's predominantly black also. But that's the, the weird thing that you get. So it just made me appreciate uh, what we do in West Africa. And it's made, you know, made us feel like, you know, we're making the right decision. And I've been going to South Africa since 2005. So it's it's something I've seen over a period of time. And I've tried to compare it. And, okay. Yeah. But nevertheless, family, don't let me keep everyone out any longer. Appreciate everybody joining us. And uh, the journey continues. And looking forward to an, another wonderful year, the 18th uh, year for our enterprise. And looking to this, uh, do some, make some wonderful moves and uh, uh, take things to another level. So good connecting with everyone. And I'll be on standby if anyone want to reach out and talk. Okay. All right. Nice All right. Take care. Good night. All right. Thanks, Bonnie. All right. Bye. This family, the journey continues. Thank you. All right. Bye.